the Cincinnati Reds are a team that seems to have found themselves, and they are on a run. And we're joined by Jim Kelch, the fantastic play-by-play announcer for the Reds. Jim, welcome back in. Thanks for the time. Hey, no problem, Anthony. All right, so you're going to host the Rockies tonight at the ballpark. Uh, Cueto on the hill. He's been uh, pitching great. Uh, tell me, I mean, are you, you guys must be just feeling fantastic about the way things are going right now. Well, yeah, you're right. I think this team feels very good about themselves, and uh, primarily for a, a couple of reasons. One, the victory last night ended a streak of 14 straight games that the Reds played against teams with plus 500 records. Now, you remember last year, and even back to 2010, they didn't always do very well against the teams that were good teams. They won the division two years ago, but really didn't have that great a record against these kind of teams. So last night, that stretch of 14 came to an end. They went 9-5 and five during that stretch, so they felt really good about that. And the other thing is if you look at the sweep of the Braves series, Brandon Phillips and Joey Votto really did not contribute in terms of any big hits. It was uh, Zach Cozart. It was Drew Stubbs. It was uh, uh, Todd Frazier, and then last night it was Devin Mesoraco. So these younger guys, these other guys, stepped up and did the job, and that's welcome for Dusty Baker and company because you can't always rely on uh, Joey Votto and Brandon Phillips. Yeah, well, talk to me about these rookies and, and their production and how this is actually bringing the team around and helping the team out thus far. Well, Demetrius, I'll tell you, Zach Cozart from the get-go – uh, and Chris Welsh says it all the time. He's got a great stage presence out there on the field for a young man who's never played uh, in the big leagues before prior to this year. He had those 11 games last year before he got hurt. First full year, he looks like he's been there uh, his entire baseball career. He's very good defensively. He's gone through a little up and down here lately at the plate, but working with Brooke Jacoby recently, he, he he got out of a slump that was a terrible road trip, and he's really had a nice homestand so far through these first four games. So he is not a major concern. Uh, Devin Mazzarocco was a guy that Dusty had said before the season starts, I don't care what he does offensively, as long as he does a good job behind the plate. And by and large, he has done that. But you say that, and then when a guy's hitting 200, you're thinking, whoa, how do I put him in the lineup? That's just a black hole in terms of offense. So it's nice to see him get the, uh, the big hit last night, the grand slam. And then the other one, really, is, is Todd Frazier. With Scott rolling out, and realistically, you don't know when and or if he's going to come back, and if he does, how effective he's going to be. Thus, third base is a position right now that is up for grabs, and Frazier's getting the opportunity to try to, uh, to uh, grab hold of this position. He hasn't exactly grabbed hold and not let go yet. He's been a little shaky defensively, and he has struck out way too much. But the last couple of days, he had to walk off home run on Wednesday, and he had two solid hits last night. Let's hope it's just taken him a little bit of time to kind of get into the position, get into the, uh, the, the mindset of, hey, I'm going to be the everyday guy, and, and things will come around for him. Not sure they will, but hopefully they will. Jim Couch, Reds play-by-play announcer here on the big show as we're talking Reds baseball. Uh, you're going after, what, seven in a row now, right? Yeah, tonight uh, will be uh, the opportunity for seven in a row. And you really got to feel good about it with Johnny Cueto going. I mean, two starts ago, he wasn't so sharp. And uh, he said after the game when he was questioned about it, he goes, hey, I'm not a robot. I'm not going to go out there. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have bad outings every now and then. But he bounced back very nicely last weekend against the Yankees. And he has always pitched well against Colorado, and he's always pitched well uh, at Great American Ballpark. So you like your chances with him on the mound tonight. Talk to me about Aralis Chapman. Uh, we had a little issue up here with a speeding ticket and that sort of thing, and uh, he's been uh, pretty much unhittable. I mean, it doesn't seem to be affecting him at all. No, it really doesn't. And uh, no, matter, no matter what position, Anthony, they put him in, he dominates. He was a setup guy. In spring training, he did a very good job uh, as a starter. Now he's, uh, as you said, virtually untouchable, unhittable in the closer's role. And the more I see him in that role now, the more I could see him staying in that spot this season, not necessarily down the road maybe, but for this season. And and the reason is that because Mike Leake and Homer Bailey now appear to be coming around and what this team has had six straight quality starts. So, 
the old adage of why fix something that isn't broken, maybe that's the Reds' rotation right now. They do have a top, uh, what, third overall team RA, and the starters ERA is very good. So if he can fill that niche right now of the closer for this year, why not? Well, every talk to me about your pitching staff because the, the hitting seems to be coming around, the pitching staff, your bullpen, everything seems to be coming together right now. Now, in the bullpen, do they have the depth to continue this long term? And do you think your starting staff has it? Because in your six-game winning streak, they had a 2.9 ERA. The starting staff was 5-0. and Are they going to be able to continue this the way they're doing it right now throughout the season? Do they have the depth for that? Well, that, that's a good question because they really – don't have any up-and-comers down in Louisville should someone go down and, uh, you know, knock on wood, should something happen in the next two weeks to a month, then all of a sudden are they going to look to a role as Chapman and say, well, now maybe we need to make him a starter? I don't think so. I think they're almost going to make a commitment to him for this year to be, uh, to be in this role. But when you look down at the AAA club, you have two veteran pitchers. One is Jeff Francis, who actually threw very well last night, and the other is Brett Tomko, both uh, KG veteran guys been around a long time and wouldn't be phased by coming up to the big leagues, and yet they aren't exactly uh, up-and-coming prospects. You pretty much know what you're going to get with them, and, uh, but that's, that's what's sitting down there. So from a starting standpoint, you, know, you kind of keep your fingers crossed and hope that things continue to go the way they are. From a relief standpoint, it's just amazing to me, and it really is the number one story to me of this year's team thus far, that when you lose your closer, Matson, you lose a key setup man in Massett and your other left-hander in Bray, none of which have thrown a pitch this, this year, and yet you still have one of the top ERAs in the bullpen in the big leagues. That's amazing. Jim, great stuff. Love the insight, and uh, good luck tonight. We'll be listening, and we'll check in with you again soon. Reds are in first place. Great time for you. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank Jim Kelch, play-by-play announcer, uh, bringing it strong. 25-19 uh, first in the Central.